in order for that to work though you need to of course give it the the q name and of course we know this is e sql simple in and we need to give the same uh, we need to do the same thing over here this is esql simple out and then we're going to go to mq connection and here you need to give it uh, connection details so you can see that in our integration nodes we have this uh, sort of test node administrator we don't want that running so I'm going to stop that because we don't need the test node at all we uh, which is running locally so that's actually running on Windows Server 2012 we don't want that we want it to run on our Linux server which is over here so I'm going to shut that one off and then we're going to eventually deploy it to the runtime which means make it run on the Linux server and not on our Windows 2012 server so that is the goal now while this is running what we're going to need to do is and now that it's done we need to go to the MQ connection and say well this is not a local queue because it's not running on our Windows 2012 machine it's running remotely so we need to set up MQ client connection properties so the destination queue manager name is CFQM we know that we've been looking at that then the server name in our case is CFM server .com, and then the listener port is 1414 now uh, just a quick note 4414 is the web interface as opposed to 1414 which is the listener it's the listener port here so if we go into our queues and then we go down here to listeners you will see, you'll see right there 1414 for the channel well the, the listener that eventually connects to our channel which is this one right here the CFM QM SSL servercon and I'm actually going to copy and paste that so that we can put it in here because that's really the channel that we want and then security identity by default we don't need to enter any of this and you can confirm that because if you go to this web page 4414 and don't enter a username at all you'll still be logged in and of course you don't want to do that in production okay so now next thing we're going to do is go to our destination and we're going to type in essentially the same information here oops put it in the right in right spot doing any of this wrong of course will give you an error message so uh, let's go here and I'll be, and the other thing is notice too we're not doing a local queue all of these things matter so cfqm there's our host name and then of course we need our channel name which I'm going to copy and paste here in the output okay so there's a more efficient way to do this than we are right now but for now we're just going to keep it simple and I am now going to save this so just control s and notice now we can do something called a flow exerciser flow exerciser to record the path that a message takes through the flow so this is, this is sort of nice in that it lets you do some initial testing just to be sure things are working okay now when I hit that button what it did was it deployed this application because remember this fl message flow is an application and we essentially made it uh, we, we put it on the server and if you look at uh, what that looks like here remember essentially what we did was we created this application that's what we just did and it's on the integration server and integration inside the integration node and notice what I was saying before here where I said EG well EG is execution group and BR you might think hmm well, what is what is BR well BR is the broker so notice they're using the old terminology here for integration node and then the integration server which is again an execution group okay so we've deployed that out so now the question is okay how do we get a message into the flow so what I'm gonna do is go up here to send to put a test message and I'm going to hit the new button and I'm just gonna call it new message all this is fine and I'll just type in this is a test and then I'm going to click on send and you notice how you get an error message here and if I go into MQ Explorer and I right click here and I put a test message on our input queue and then I type in something and hit enter and then I press F5 to reload this notice that our message is still in one uh, it's listed as one inside the in queue which means something is obviously wrong that our IIB application is not running otherwise the one here would have gone to this out queue and it turns out that actually this is a pretty easy thing it's just a sort of typo uh, the channel name here is incorrect now I tried to connect over SSL and the error message I got said hey this is not really an SSL channel so you need to change that and sure enough 
fix it, you just type in CFM, cfqm.nonssl serve.servercon. And that should uh, that should do it. So we're going to go here, and then we're going to go here. And this really tells you how important it is that these channel names, uh, how important a role they play. So I stopped that message flow, and now I'm going to start it up again. We should see that that redeploys out, and it's up and running. So let's try doing our test message again. Same test message, nothing different here. And see if we get an error message. And we didn't. And then notice too that we see MQQ monitor and it tells us this is a test, t telling us that it actually did go through. Now, if you click on close and then go to the MQ Explorer, you'll see that we are at uh, zero here for the current queue length. It said it was one, but that's just because, well, uh, I paused the video and I was testing to see what went wrong. But notice that it says zero here and it says zero here, and that's that's actually what it's supposed to do. It's just running a quick test and it puts the message in and gets the message out, in our, in our, at least our case, with the te sending the test message. Now watch this, if I right click, and I'm, so I'm not using IIB here at all, just MQ, and I say, put test message and I say this is from MQ and then I put the message and I hit F5 to refresh what we should see is that there is no one here at all even though I put the message here IIB redirects it into the out queue and that's really exactly what we wanted to do